Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So the latest NMN human study, the 17th to date, has been published and it returns some favourable results with regard to hypertension in humans, but also its effect on the inhibiting NAD killer CD38. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump in and see what this latest NMN human study has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Josh Conway, where he covers a study that was published in the journal Nature, where researchers investigated in a clinical trial the effect that NMN supplementation had on systolic blood pressure, but also CD38. And there are links in the description below to the study and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Hypertension represents a major public health issue that is responsible for 8.5 million deaths due to stroke, coronary artery disease and renal disease worldwide. Endothelial dysfunction and arterial stiffness are considered hallmarks of hypertension and they play a central role in the development of atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases. In hypertensive patients, alterations to the NAD levels and their relationship with blood pressure elevation and vascular damage has not yet been studied. Combining human clinical trial research, cellular analysis and mouse studies, the researchers published in the journal Nature that they've discovered a relationship between NAD hypertension and the immune signal known as CD38. Now this research begins with the discussion around NAD and its nature as a fundamental aspect of all human metabolism. In particular, the authors homed in on the immune factor CD38, which has been previously found to suppress NAD levels to greater levels as we continue to age. Now, previous research has found that the NAD booster nicotinamide riboside, or NR, may have a positive effect on arterial stiffness in human beings. However, these researchers decided to use a different precursor, that being nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN as we know it, to determine if this particular NAD booster would help in the treatment of hypertension. So firstly, the researchers examined 102 people, 52 of whom were healthy and 50 of whom had recently been diagnosed with hypertension. While the relative levels of NAD were similar, the hypertensive group had far less NAD than the healthy group. Similarly, there was an inverse correlation with blood NAD levels and blood pressure. The researchers also looked specifically at the aortas of the hypertensive patients. They found that the NAD was depleted by nearly half in this particular tissue. These results were recapitulated in the mice. However, these biometrics were substantially improved in the mice that were given NMN, which enjoyed lower blood pressure and also better aortic health. Now, before the skeptics start banging on about mouse studies, this was also repeated in a human trial. A total of 19 people completed a second study in which nine were treated with lifestyle modifications and 10 were treated with the same lifestyle modifications plus NMN supplementation. As expected, NMN significantly increased the NAD levels in the treated group of patients. Now that said, diastolic blood pressure was not affected to the level of statistical significance, but systolic blood pressure was substantially reduced in the NMN group. Brachial ankle pulse wave velocity, a marker of blood vessel damage, was also reduced in the NMN group. The researchers also found that the mRNA expression of CD38 was far higher in the aortic tissue of the people who were suffering from hypertension. Interestingly, people with hypertension were also found to have significantly more SIRT6 as well. So to confirm this particular connection, the researchers used silencing and promoter RNA on human aortic cells cultivated in an environment containing NMN. Compared to the control groups, the role of CD38 was confirmed in that cells that had their CD38 production stifled by silencing RNA had more NAD, and the cells with additional CD38 had less NAD. The researchers also noted that less CD38 was also found to be associated with better healing abilities. 
This, the researchers say, clearly demonstrates that CD38 is a vital part of NAD metabolism. The researchers also noted that depleting CD38 from mice also showed certain benefits. Whether the mice had their CD38 genetically knocked out from birth or they were transfected with a virus, the effects of hypertension were substantially reduced. However, administering NMN did not have significant effects on these modified mice. But the researchers weren't finished there. Further experimentation explored the connection between macrophagy infiltration and CD38. Macrophages taken from the hypertensive patients were found to have more interleukin IL-1B, which is associated with greater levels of inflammation. The connection to CD38 was found to be due to the JAK-STAT pathway, confirming previous research. So after this research, I think we're all asking the question, is there a better treatment on the horizon? As directly inhibiting CD38 seems to be considerably more effective than NAD precursor supplementation, it's logical that that should be the next step in the research cascade. However, the techniques that are appropriate for laboratory mice can't always be used in a clinical setting on human beings. So I'm sure we're all looking forward to research into a CD38 inhibitor that can be safely used on human beings. So I hear you ask, is there a way to inhibit CD38 whilst also increasing our NAD levels? Well, if you look here at this scientific study, in the graph on the left, how as the molecule apigenin increases, the CD38 cellular activity actually decreases. And on the bottom graph on the left, you can see how a molecule called quercetin increases, the CD38 cellular activity also decreases. This is important because as CD38 decreases, NAD levels are allowed to increase. You can also see here on the top graph on the right picture how with apigenin, NAD levels increase about 50%. That's the white bar. And on the lower graph for quercetin, they don't rise as much, but the change is certainly significant. So the next logical question would be how do we get more apigenin or quercetin into our bodies? Some foods do contain apigenin. Here's a list of the most common foods, although there are a lot more. It's nice to see beer and red wine on the list. And it's been said that the dried forms of these allow better bioavailability. Moving on, let's look at some foods that contain quercetin. Although quercetin raises NAD slightly less than apigenin, these foods seem to be the type that will be fairly easy for most people to introduce into their diets. So you're probably going to have to eat quite a lot of food to get a decent amount of either quercetin or apigenin into your system. So there are supplements that you can buy. And there are many companies that will sell you these particular supplements, including the big three, Do Not Age, Renew Bioscience and Pro Health Longevity. If you do choose to buy from one of these companies, please feel free to use my discount code. That's going to give you between 10 and 20% discount at checkout. And there are links in the description below to these companies' websites. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made some notes. So I think a positive result for NMN supplementation in humans, doing something, again, it's not designed to do. It was never designed to treat hypertension in human beings. Um, should we take bets to see if the NMN skeptics actually take the time to cover this positive study and highlight the significant results with reference to systolic blood pressure and also the reduced marker of blood vessel damage? Um, or do you think they may just focus, if they do cover it, on diastolic blood pressure that wasn't really changed? Um, or they remain to silent and then continue to focus on 12 now of the 17 studies. Time will tell. I hope that they do take the time to cover this, uh, this study in a positive way.